let's be honest, editing setups are expensive. And if you want to squeeze something even remotely capable of editing 4K in a portable frame, that's gonna be next level expensive. So when I was thinking of buying a new laptop, I wanted it to be small, I wanted something portable. I wanted something that, can, that I can fit in all of my bags and that I can always take with me on all of my travels. It has to be able to edit 4K, but because I mainly shoot in Full HD, it should be able to process Full HD with ease. So I was looking at i7 8th generation Intel processors and 16 gigabytes of RAM, which proved to be a kind of a problem because there's not a lot of 13 inch laptop with 60 gigabytes of RAM. Also, if I could get a uh, non-integrated graphics card, that would be incredible. And yeah, I don't really wanna pay $2,000 for it. Also, I wanted to take Windows. Uh, why Windows and why not Mac? I've been working my whole life with Windows and if something goes wrong, I kind of sort of know how to fix it or at least try to fix it. With Apple, I, would, I wouldn't know what to do. So I decided to stick with Windows and to go for Windows. So in the end, my top candidates were Windows Surface Book 2 or Surface Laptop 2, Razer Stealth Ultrabook 13, Dell XPS 13, HP Spectra X360, or Asus ZenBook 14. I know that technically this is a 14 inch laptop, but it still fits like an A4 paper size format. So I decided to include it in this selection. A thorough deep dive into reviews revealed it's gonna be expensive. So I tried my best to find a good compromise between getting the best machine I could get for the money spent. So the Surface laptops looked really sleek and I really love their design, but their price range and the lack of ports, I was really not happy about it. The Razer Stealth looked like a really good option and it's even marketed to our content creators, but I was having a problem locating it in Slovenia or just in general in Europe. You have to know that the prices in Europe or in Slovenia in particular are usually 10 to 30% higher than prices in US. So I was getting really afraid what this price is gonna be inflated to when it gets to me. The HP Spectra looked like a really good budget option, but it only had integrated graphics and I really, really, really wanted to push for something with non-integrated graphics. So the Asus ZenBook was interesting because it had non-integrated graphics card, not exactly the same as Razer Stealth, uh, but I couldn't find the price on the official Asus site. And then when I did a little bit of Googling, I figured out that my local uh, computers provider, they have it in stock. So because my travel plans demanded that I get a laptop pretty soon, as in like same day, I decided to go for Asus ZenBook 14 inch. So did I make a good choice? I absolutely love it. I didn't go wrong with the size. It fits tightly in all my backpacks and bags without causing me to strain from additional weight. It's so thin that I'm almost afraid to apply a bit more pressure to it and I always handle it very carefully, even though it meets the military standard for reliability and durability. It looks very elegant, but still unique and individualistic. You know, it's not Apple. I also feel that since it's not an Apple, it's not so prone to being stolen. Nothing about its look screams I'm expensive to an untrained eye. It's just a tiny laptop. The keyboard is very comfortable to type on. Maybe it's not the most fancy looking, but it's comfortably spaced keys and nice gift makes it the perfect writing companion. The lit up numbers pad keyboard is a super nice addition whenever you need to import large amounts of numbers or just your two-factor authentication code which you should have enabled for all of your online services wherever possible. Seriously, it's not a perfect system, but it's an added layer of cybersecurity that it protects you against phishing and fraud. The bezels of the screen are so gorgeously non-existent. The camera and Windows Hello sensor are on top, so you get a normal webcam angle. I have to say I'm really enjoying Windows Hello, opening the laptop and if there's sufficient light and other random magic for it to recognize me, immediately being able to sign in into my account knowing only I can do that. It has all of the connections you might need in your day-to-day -day life. 
even with a micro SD card slot, which makes it super convenient for me to transfer photos and videos from my camera. The real strength of this computer is shown when you give it some heavy task to chew on. i7 8th generation processor with 16GB of RAM Make sure your workflow is undisturbed. The dedicated NVIDIA graphics card kicks in whenever you need even more power to your rendering. If you work a lot with Adobe Creative programs, I would highly suggest you going with NVIDIA graphics cards. They just get well along with Adobe and there's no render or other random errors, as I had the privilege to experience them with AMD graphics. Let's just say that's three times faster than my outdated desktop machine and I'm really enjoying creating on my laptop. A good thing to know is that with all that processing power comes heat. The laptop gets really hot whenever you're using it in full potential, so just put it on a table to maximize the airflow through cooling vents. I haven't noticed any decreases in performance due to overheating though. The only aspect that I was aware might be a little bit of a disappointment to me is the battery life. It's advertised as 13 hours of battery life, but let's be real, I've never gotten more than 9 hours out of it. I mean, it's completely reasonable. The i7 processor, separate graphics card and a giant very bright display are all huge power drainers. If you start the day with a fully charged laptop, you'll never have problems. But you know, I'm forgetful and then I try to squeeze 5 hours of work time out of 30% of battery life. In my opinion, Asus ZenBook 14 provides just the perfect balance between portability and power, where you get the absolute best of both worlds. Is it for everybody? No. But if you do need a powerful computer and you would still like to keep it light in size, then this is the perfect option. Now, I would like to do a series of videos, real life tests or something similar. So what are some of the scenarios where you use your laptop or phone or any other gadget and you would like to see how it performs in real life? Is it while traveling, watching movies, working in a cafe? Let me know in the comments down below. That's it for me. Have a nice day and I'll see you soon. Bye.